And one of those candidates is here. His name is Dennis Wynn. And he's running to replace, dare I say, Mark Ritchie. He, oh, did I really? Go ahead and put that next slide on here. Jack, just inform me. Go, oh, one more slide. He's not the gubernatorial candidate. That's my mistake. He's running for Secretary of State. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Wynn. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, uh, Jack, for inviting me. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people here in this room don't know who I am, so I'm gonna, we're going to start off with that. Uh, my name is Dennis Wynn, and for all those white folks out there that are <laughs> challenged by pronouncing Asian last names, it's Wynn with Wynn. That's the, that's, that is the, the, uh, uh, the uh, campaign slogan, Wynn with Wynn. Go to our uh, website, www.win, W-I-N, dash, with, dash, win, N-G-U-I-N dot com. Facebook, uh, Dennis Wynn from Minnesota Secretary of State. And uh, like our Facebook, share it. Look, I'm Tea Party. I am so yes. proud of the Tea Party. And if, uh, and if we don't get involved in our democracy, well, the country that I came to at the age of five in 1975 will no longer exist. So let me tell you a little bit about myself, and then we'll tell you, each, everybody, why I'm running. Um, I'm the son of working class Vietnamese refugees that came to this country at the age of five in 1975. I'm also the proud father of four young children aging, ranging from the ages of 14 to 12 to six and one, and so proud of having these kids. And that's what it's all about, right? I, uh, I grew up in Southern California. Um, my father was a, was, a, was a working class guy. He, uh, he was a carpenter, he was a grocery store clerk, and he was a gas station attendant. My mother uh, didn't speak a word of English when she came to this country at the age of 29, uh, put herself through community college, eventually got a job at Hughes Aircraft, and through that, and he was, by the way, she was a very, she was a proud union member. Um, and, and uh, private sector union, by the way. Um, and through that, through those wages that she gave us, my father and my mother gave us a middle class life. I led an idyllic childhood. I was a scholar athlete growing up, played football, basketball, and baseball in high school. You know, Southern California, there's no snow, and so ice hockey's out the window, of course. Um, but I, I, I lived the American dream. I uh, got educated. I received bachelor's degrees in economics and. Chinese literature from the University of California, Irvine, where I currently sit on the Board of Trustees. I received a master's degree in international relations from Johns Hopkins University. My entree in the state of Minnesota, of course, was I received a law degree from the University of Minnesota Law School. And finally, I, I studied for an MBA at the University of Chicago. And so with all that studying came all that pressure. With all that pressure, I lost all my hair. And there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I, I'm a non-politician. I, uh, I've spent the last 18 years of my life in the private sector. I run a uh, private equity investment firm. And what we do in, in private equity, of course, is we invest in companies. We uh, grow capital bases. We grow revenues. And yes, sometimes we cut costs. And that's the skill set I'm going to bring to the Secretary of State's office. And why am I running? I'm running really on three main reasons, and only three. First. The business services, business registrations make up roughly two-thirds of the workload of the Secretary of State's office. Yet, the liberals never talk about that because they are anti-capitalist by nature. What I'm going to do, given my private sector background, is I'm going to go in there and I want to make the Secretary of State's office the one-stop shop for job creation and capital formation in the state of Minnesota. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to construct an ecosystem in the Secretary of State's office where lawyers, accountants, uh, investors, investment bankers, industry associations can be able to liaise with entrepreneurs as they go about and set up their own businesses. So we're going to we're gonna help these, enable these entrepreneurs to, set, to get their businesses up and running from stage zero to stage 10, not within five years, but within six to 12 months. And this does not require one ex extra dollar of government expenditure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reorganize that department to take it from merely, merely a filing cabinet of business registrations to then create this ecosystem where third-party 
of professional services can come in and help our entrepreneurs. And if you really believe that in 2013, 48% of all jobs that were created in this country were created in firms with 50 employees and less, well, that's, that's something you should support. Second reason I'm gonna run is we're gonna talk about elections. And we're gonna really talk about elections. We're gonna talk about the, the, the horrible, wonderful, horrible things that the current occupant has done. And so what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna talk about elections integrity at the same time, ensuring elections integrity, but also increase election access. And we're gonna do that by using 21st century technology. We're gonna talk about electronic poll books. We're gonna talk about online registration. We're gonna talk about absentee balloting. To ensure whoever votes is the person that votes and where he or she lives. We're gonna ensure that. That's the second point we're gonna run on. And finally, the third theme of my campaign is we're, we're gonna work to, and with the help of our friends and our brothers and sisters in the Tea Party, we're gonna work to rebrand the Republican Party for the 21st century. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going we're gonna to live some very tried and true principles as David Benner back there is always continuing to talk about. Jack Rogers is talking about, of course, Jay Duesenberg. We're going to talk about uh, a constitutionally limited government. We're going to talk about free market economics. And we're going to talk about that third one, which I can always forget, fiscal responsibility. And how are we going to do that? In terms of fiscal responsibility, I, I promise to you, this is the first plank of, uh, of what I'm gonna do. If elected, I am going to cut the size of the Secretary of State's office, number one. Number two, we're gonna talk about uh, uh, constitutional limit, limit to government. We're gonna go and we're gonna undo what the Secretary of State's done. He last, uh, the current Secretary of State last year, you unilaterally set up an online registration uh, uh, system contrary to the legislative will. We're going we're gonna to undo that. We're going to put that through public hearings. We're going to have the state legislator vote on that. And if it is approved, we're going to have the then governor then sign it into law. And so we're going to undo what he did unilaterally. And finally, we're going to about free, economic, free market economics. We're really going to work to help reduce the red tape within the Secretary of State's office so that people that want to set up their businesses can really get there and do it in a quick way. We're going to enable the entrepreneurs to really live his or her American dream. And that's really my, my, uh, my, 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 my platform. I need your help. We're building a wonderful coalition um, uh, within the Republican Party. 70, we're the, now the only, we're the, we're the only announced Republican candidate. And I, 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 think, I think we hopefully will not draw a challenger, but 70% of the Republican state legislators have already endorsed our candidacy. Um, and so we feel very good. We're going really hard to all the BPOUs. We're going, of course, hard to the Tea Party events. Spreading the American message of social and economic opportunity, of personal responsibility, and of course, effective government. And I'm going and I'm going into the minority neighborhoods of St. Paul and, and Minneapolis. And we're going to the Hmong neighborhoods. We're going to the Chinese, Vietnamese, Hispanic, and East African neighborhoods. And, we're, and I look at these people right in their face and I say, Is, are you happy receiving that three, four, five, six hundred dollar welfare check every month? Is, there, is, is, this, is that really the reason why you came to this wonderful country of ours? It can't be. Look at me in my life. Live your American dream, because I've done it. And so that message, the light bulb is turned on. It's turned on. And I'm telling you, the Democrats have demagogued these minority communities for the last 20 years, and they've run up scores of 80, 20% every single election. This election, it's gonna stop. Because this election, I, this election, you mark my words, we're gonna win those minority uh, votes by 60-40. If we do it, we're gonna elect someone like uh, Marty Seifert to be the next governor of the state of Minnesota. So that's, that's where we're at. We, I feel very good. We've been now endorsed by a swath of uh, uh, community leaders within these uh, St. Paul and Minneapolis neighborhoods. Yeah, I gotta tell you a wonderful story. I went up to Duluth three days ago. I was, in, I was interviewed by the uh, publisher of the Duluth News Tribune. For all you that don't know who, what the Duluth News Tribune is all about, that's a Democratic newspaper. 
Well, I gotta tell you, maybe it was my balded head or my very nice <laughs> smile, but I, I think I swayed him because at the end of that hour interview, he told me that to come back in the fall, he feels good about where our, our campaign is, and he can't make an official endorsement of our campaign with his newspaper, but he's gonna personally endorse me in my campaign. He told me the next time I go up to Duluth, which is next month, he's gonna hold a fundraiser for me, <laughs> and he's gonna take me to the Duluth Chamber of Commerce to make sure anyone that in Duluth hears about our campaign will, will support us. And so that's the type of stuff we're, we're converting. That's the type of people we're converting. People are really sick and tired of, you know, don't shy away from our conservative principles. People are tired and sick and tired of what's going on in St. Paul, sick and tired of what's going on in DC. And it needs a, it needs a new messenger. We don't have to be Democrat light. We have to be true to our principles. Don't let the, the people that have hijacked the Republican Party over the last 20 years continue to do what they've done. Stay true, or, but let's rebrand it. Let's be happy. There's so much excitement in this room. We don't, you know, I always tell our friends, you know, it's, it's, not a bad, it's not a bad gig, America. Let's smile more. Let's go out. Let's, let's, let's smile and be happy and convert these people because that's what it's all about, converting these people to our way of thinking. Thank you very much. May God bless you. May God bless your family. May God bless the United States of America. Dennis, don't go away. Whenever we have somebody step on the stage at any one of our tea parties, we ask for you to handle three questions. Thank you, sir. Okay, will you buy me lunch? Uh, anytime. <laughs> but it's not a date, okay? It's not a date, yeah? All right. Uh, well, well, first, I, I appreciate you taking this on and, and running for the Secretary of State. Uh, Minnesota Pressure Point and, and maybe some of the people here in the room, I don't know, we went uh, and challenged Mark Ritchie at a recent uh, League of Women Voters uh, presentation that he gave. And um, I guess before I get to the question, one thing I want to say, uh, and it caught me off guard, and a lot of people do it. Um, when, you, when someone says this great democracy that we have, I always cringe to myself because we have a representative uh, republic. So my only uh, respectful um, suggestion would be to use that language uh, because I think that's also educational for people when they hear that, they say, well, what the heck is that? Because uh, we don't have a democracy. Um, and anyway, I, I would ask you the same question that I asked Mark Ritchie uh, <coughs> several weeks ago, and that is, does the Secretary of State have the duty and authority to investigate election integrity. Uh, Mark Ritchie didn't seem so sure. Uh, the, 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 the Secretary of State's office is empowered by the state legislature to administer the election systems of this state on the federal, state, and local levels. So by that writ of power, it very much does have the power to ensure election integrity in the state. Yes, sir. And I have a lighter question for you. I have a lighter question for you. We supported Blong Yang for council members in uh, Minneapolis. Will you have the food available like he did during his <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I gotta tell you, I, th I think our Vietnamese food is much better than their Hmong food, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Are you aware that the state of Minnesota has two sets of books financially. Check that out closely. Well, well you should forward that question to the next to the next speaker, sir. He's he's going to be hopefully uh, doing a lot of the uh, uh, this well cutting the cutting the spending and of course cutting the taxation. Okay, thank you very much. Give Dennis a hand. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.